90% of physics or astronomy PhDs are not going to end up in a research position. Where are these research positions? Well, there's, there's this stereotypical professor pos position that you might be familiar with, right? This is someone at a major, a large university, a prestigious university that does a lot of research and a lot of teaching at the university level. A particular professor, when they get hired on, are on a tenure track. That means they have about five years to prove themselves worthy. And to give you a sense of that, what worthy means, this varies department to, by department, this varies university to university. For a large research university, for a relatively well-known physics or astronomy department, it means you have five years to raise about a million bucks and write, I don't know, like 50 papers or co-author at least 50 papers and get lots of citations in there too. Oh yeah, you also have to teach. Make sure you don't screw up the teaching. You don't necessarily have to do a good job teaching because it's not like you've been trained to teach or anything, but just don't screw it up, all right? And maybe a little bit of service, maybe a little bit of outreach. You have to do some departmental service, uh, you know, serve on committees for advising and mentoring and hiring and, and finance, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then a little bit of outreach, which usually neither hurts nor helps in a tenure evaluation. So you can have a long-term career in the sciences if you're lucky enough, if you find the right position, if you're good enough, if you're a good match, you could be, this is the crazy part, you could be like the smartest scientist in 50 years to come on the scene. Like just absolutely blow your mind brilliant. But let's say your particular interests are in one particular field. You know, one subdiscipline. like, oh, I'm really, I'm the smartest person in the world and I'm interested in, I don't know, supernova. And you make that the subject of your PhD dissertation, then you go on, make it the subject of your postdoc work, and you're making lots of progress. Man, you're figuring out how supernova work, how stars blow up, the whole deal, you're, you're cracking codes, you're, you're doing stuff. But if you're ready for that, P, that faculty position after you've done a couple postdocs, and nobody's hiring in supernova work, say, oh, you know, we already, we already, have a couple supernova people and well one's retiring but we just replaced them uh, last year so we're just not interested in a supernova person that's it you're out we don't care if you're the smartest uh most published well we're well respect we already got a couple supernova people and you know we're trying to we're trying to balance out our department that's just how it is and that honestly that sucks but that's life uh but there's still there's other options so there's more teaching oriented professorships. These are at smaller universities, teaching universities, colleges, liberal arts colleges, things like that. They're where instead of spending the balance of your time doing research, you're spending the balance of your time doing teaching. Okay. There, they don't care so much about your field of expertise because you will spend most of your time teaching and that's fine. There's also government laboratories like Oak Ridge National Lab, Argonne National Lab, Los Alamos. Uh, these are, uh, Decent labs do a lot of astrophysical research and you can get a job there. Problem there is there's like no money. You have to get grants to support yourself every single time. It's what's called a soft money position. And if you fail to get a grant, if you don't get any internal grants or external grants, uh, you still have a job. You just don't get a, a paycheck or anything, which is kind of lame. So what do, what do the, and that's the 10%, that's the 10% of the PhDs that actually end up in a research career. What do the 90% do? Well, they go into finance. They go to Silicon Valley. They do consulting. Uh, they do actually do some pretty amazing stuff. If you have a PhD in physics or astronomy, that means you, even if you didn't start out this way, you're good at math by now because you've had half decade of practice of really, really hard math. You're good at computer programming. You're good at statistical analysis. You're good at logical, critical thinking. You're a pretty well-equipped person. So there's lots of opportunities out for that combination of skills is very, very valuable. And in fact, people who have PhDs who end up going into industry make a lot more 
of the good stuff than the people who stay in academia. And I'm sure they have healthy, happy, fulfilling lives with reasonable work hours and they have kids and a nice house and all that other stuff uh, that, that makes for a decent life. Let's say you don't want to go into a PhD. You don't want to head for that PhD in physics or astronomy. You don't want to throw away a solid decade of your life pursuing a career that probably just chances are, even if you're very smart and very good, just aren't going to pan out. What are some options for you? Well, if you still have this, this burning passion for astronomy, for physics, and you want to do something related to it, but you know, maybe the skills don't match up, maybe, maybe you're not too hot on the math part, uh, maybe the job's just didn't line up, or maybe you have other skills. That's fine because there's lots of opportunities for people with other skills to, to support the scientific mission. Think of you know, the people that NASA hires. These are uh, communication specialists, graphic designers, uh, uh, very, very smart, specialized people that are helping the scientific endeavor. And even if that doesn't work, you can still go into other things. You can do, say, volunteering. Even if you have a job totally unrelated to the sciences, you can join CosmoQuest. You can join the Galaxy Zoo. You can use your amateur spare time on a volunteer basis to help scientists do scientific things. And that's pretty cool. And those are very worthwhile and useful and absolutely needed endeavors. Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.